Friends, today is Friday, the 4th of September. It's Labor Day weekend. And I'm in the cathedral. We just celebrated Mass and, of course, another beautiful sunny day. The Mass that we celebrate today was for our administration and faculty and staff of Cathedral School. And we had a blessing and a commissioning of all of our staff. It was good to see everybody together as they completed a week of preparation for a new and unusual school year, part remote, part in the classroom, and so on. But I must say they've done a tremendous job in preparing for that. I met with the principal yesterday and all was in place as much as it can be in these most unusual times. And so we came together uh, to celebrate the Mass of the Holy Spirit. That's why I'm in this red vestment, Mass of the Holy Spirit, asking for the wisdom and the guidance of the Holy Spirit as we begin this new school year. And I told the teachers and staff that uh, we're reading from the Gospel of Luke, the very beginning of the public ministry of Jesus learning who this man is, who has come into the world in power, Jesus. And today, uh, we identify Jesus as the bridegroom, the bridegroom. Remember a few days ago, Jesus began his public ministry in Nazareth, got up in the synagogue, unfurled the scroll of the prophet Isaiah and read there that the Spirit of the Lord is upon him because the Lord has anointed him to bring glad tidings to the poor and freedom from those in captivity. Freedom for those in captivity. And we saw as the gospel unfolded what that means, that he has come in power, in word, and action, a word of authority. And his first miracle in the synagogue at Nazareth, he expels a demon, freedom, freedom from that captivity of a demon. And then he travels to Capernaum, and there the, he cures the mother-in-law of Peter from a fever. A similar kind of captivity, a fever could lead to death especially in the ancient world, and he cures her of that. And that evening, the evening after sundown, after the Sabbath, they brought all of their sick to Jesus, and he laid hands upon all of them individually, curing them. The long-awaited Messiah has come. And people, of course, in Ancient Israel, even today, continue at, well, who is? Who is this person who is doing these things? And the gospel gradually unveils who he is. And today, in the gospel, it uh, it speaks about the bridegroom and a first controversy story coming into play here. The scribes and the Pharisees, once again, asking, well, why is it that this man isn't fasting, doesn't pray in the same way as scribes and Pharisees, doesn't fast like the disciples of John the Baptist? And Jesus, the response of Jesus is, that, can you make the wedding guest fast while the bridegroom is with them? The image of a wedding and the image of a bridegroom Both of them are very common in the scriptures, the Old Testament and the New Testament. In ancient Israel, Israel was the bride, God, the bridegroom. Now in the New Testament, Jesus is the bridegroom. And who is the bride? It's the church. It's all of us, the union of bride and groom, the intimacy of bride and groom. And thus Jesus says that in this moment of joy, the long-awaited Messiah has come. How can we fast? We need to celebrate. This is an occasion of joy, joy for all of us. And we can speak of bride and groom, Christ and the church and so on, but on a more mystical level, we celebrate the union of heaven 
and earth, the union of humanity and divinity, heaven touching earth, earth touching heaven. I like to use the word kiss, heaven kissing earth, earth kissing heaven, united fully in the person of Jesus Christ. And this gives us great joy. We're not going to fast, we're going to celebrate, celebrate, celebrate this bridegroom. You know, I like to remind people that the first word of Christianity is rejoice. The angel coming to Mary in the Annunciation says, rejoice, O highly favored daughter, the Lord is with you. Rejoice. That's the hallmark of this new dispensation in Jesus Christ, the hallmark of joy. Joy should mark all of us. And yet, <clears throat> I'm sure that you could ask people, well, what's the hallmark? What's the most basic characteristic of Christianity? Most would not say joy. They kind of look askance at the church, all those rules, all this, so on and so forth. No. We need to remember that the hallmark of the church is joy. The bridegroom is with us. And thus, the good news has broken into the world. The good news of Jesus Christ who has come to us. The long-awaited Messiah is here in power and in word. And so it's time to feast and a toast to you. We'll see you tomorrow and have a good Labor Day weekend.